The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. I'm just watching on this one minute chart of the E-mini, how important this 200 period exponential moving average is at 52.88. Uh, we're all over the show, up and down below it, just within a, a two points or so, just uh, popping here and popping there. But look at this. I want to move down. It was such a steady move. Uh, we're looking at the 10 minute chart, hit the 200 period moving average. Uh, around about, um, I think it was like last night, it just kind of hugged it, hugged it, hugged it, and then turned down sharply, came back, retested it, couldn't hold it, and then just had low lows and low highs all the way through until just about, this is a 10-minute chart, so that was like 10, 30 minutes ago at about the uh, 9.50, yep, 9.50. Uh, the low was uh, 52, 52.78.75, and for the very first time, you start to see a little bit of upside power. We'll see if that can hold. It's very on a very short-term basis. That was a very sudden move to the downside. You're seeing the five-minute chart. This is a five-minute chart. So the fact that it went L, meaning that the the nine-period moving average crossed positive, uh, it's a good sign. But oh, it's it's going to have to do a lot to hold that uh, for the full five minutes. So it's a green, a full green nine-period moving average changing from pink to green. And you've got the one-minute charts. Uh, it turned up at green a little while back. And there it is, just struggling at that 200 period moving average. It's funny how that works. And you can see the automatic, the automated Chapman wave notations here, 52.89.70. That's uh, the futures trade in quarter points. But that was a 70. And you're pulling back. And we'll see if that's going to hold because it's been a, a, a tough road to hoe. So, Let's get back to our story, and we'll go right right from the very beginning. If I can get rid of this, I guess I'm gonna I, I'm gonna be defeated by that uh, that dawn. Uh, what is this called? The data, right there. This little data block. Okay, here we go. So the Dow. Let's go through through it from the very beginning. Uh, it's a very important session because that. Persistent leg A to the downside. This is just a single leg A for the Dow, which made its high uh, at uh, 40,077 back on the 20th of May. Look, there it is. Uh, peak D, we're always watching peak Ds in the Chapman Wave methodology. That's where other things can happen. Pulls back very sharply. It now has gone into the gap. The gap, that's the gap of around about the six. Let me just give you the exact date. That is the 3rd of May. Um, we've got a low right there at about, yeah, I can't read it. So now I have to use this. So I'll move it up a little bit. <laughs> I'll get used to it. It's just a matter of time. Uh, this is the low of 38,518. And the day before the high was uh, 38,295. So we, we've got into that in a little bit. And I don't know how it's going to work here in the weekly chart. But I've done this the other day. I'll do it again. I'll actually highlight it now. Um, you've got a vertical line right there, and that is the week of, well, I'm going to put the one, this one in right here as well, right there. And I'll show you what's very interesting, is that this move, the 22nd of March, where the price went to that 40,000, and uh, was that the 40,077 level? Yeah. That was 39,008, uh, was that 39,889? Yeah. And then what happens is pull back and makes a slightly higher high. Now, this is going to be very important. Why? Because 40,051, the week of the 17th, and then 40,077, the week of the 24th of May. And lo and behold, what do we have? We have the nine period moving average still way above the 14. Look at the MACD deflected lower, the stochastic pullback under 80%. The, the on balance volume is did an, a good retest with a higher high. Um, so it's still, these two factors are really important. The nine period over the 14, is, it means that we're just having a sideways consolidation, even though you've gone from 40,000 uh, 40, to today's low of 38,413. Yeah, that's. That's a that's a pretty big move, 
Um, and because of it, we've got a cell mode. And for the very first time, the day is young. But you've got the nine period moving average crossing negative in the Dow. The day is young. I, this is a daily chart. I have to wait for the close. But so far, you've got that first inkling that there is weakness that might persist if you continue lower. Let's go to the S&P. S&P, I want to talk about that as well because those, the weekly chart made higher high and it's closed above that high a couple of times. Uh, and that's going to be important right here. This is the weekly chart. And I've got this as the official leg D. And within that context, you can see the MACDs deflected lower. The stochastics still very good at 87%. On balance volume is very good. Nine is over the 14. So there's nothing really to see here to say, oh, oh this is terrible. This is going to be a huge smash to the downside. No, what we're looking at is within the, the, the combination of all these different factors, um, you've got to consider that the middle chart, and this is for those of you who do chart work. If you look at the daily chart on the left, you look at the middle chart on the right, and you look at uh, the middle chart and then the, the monthly chart on the right, when there's a very sharp pullback in the daily, when the daily starts to spring back, what happens very often is that the weekly chart, the sandwich in the middle, that Bologna, that, that takes a long time to repair the damage. That's why holding up like this right now means that on the S&P, the 9 over the 14 is very strong. That's the daily. The weekly, 9 over the 14, 9 period moving average over the 14, very strong. Monthly, 9 over the 14, very strong. However, in the Dow, we went to a leg D in the monthly. We've gone to a leg, a very quick D to E leg, E in the in the monthly on the S&P. The QQQ, actually, this is even more important because the QQQ is only at a leg C. That's, that's, that's actually very positive, saying that in 2024, looking, I would even put it towards the summer, uh, let's call it um, August, uh, towards the middle, to the end part of the summer, there's a good chance that it'll start to try to make that D when, when, when we make a peak C, because you have to wait uh, all of June. If 460.58 is the high of May, that was the high of about four sessions ago, you've got all of June to, to not break above it to make a peak C. But if you go to 460.58, an exact parallel high, that extends leg C. If it's one penny, 0 0.01 below that, all of June, that means you've made a peak C. So all of this is saying to me, hey, everything's in place for a sharp turn down, but you've got to get price to, uh, you, you can't just have technicals failing, you can't just have price failing, you've got to have a synchronicity of the former leadership, and let's go to the SMHs, the SMH is now down 427 at 245.55, and that it closed very strongly above the 239.14 high of March, I believe it was. Um, so we're looking at this being an F slash C in the chat wave notation. I don't want to go too much into it right now because there's just a lot going on that I need to get to. But this is an extremely strong. I haven't seen a divergence between the Dow, which is down what, 8%, 7% uh, or so? Um, and the SMH is making all-time highs. And that kind of divergence I've not seen in a shorter-term situation. And that just says to me, I have to give respect to the SMHs for being able to hold so well the same amount. And the Dow, I have to say, oh, right week, huh? But it's 30 stuff. We'll talk about that. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. In the context of what I'm looking at, I've always believed that the semiconductors lead us up and the semiconductors lead us down. Uh, the down made its high, all-time high, and only late did the SMA suddenly break out and start to trade very strongly, and that was because of NVIDIA. Uh, it, it, at a certain point over the next week, I'm going to suggest to you that there's a really good chance that the all the praise that's been lavished on and, and NVIDIA, I, I, I think it's worthy of all that. It's done a fantastic job, but just on a purely over, overboard basis, I can see it having a digestive phase. Not a big, massive pullback, but at least a digestive phase. How it happens is going to be important, but I'm just going to say that when NVIDIA... Uh, starts to pull back sharply and drags the SMHs down, I would have to say it's a combination. I can't just look at one one particular stock. I'm going to say if the SMH, the semiconductor, Van X Semiconductor ETF, actually trades in the next two weeks, I, I can't say more than that. It has to be in the next two weeks, by about the end of the first week of June. If we're seeing something below 233, 234, somewhere below that black 14 period exponential moving average that's going to take it's going to take a lot more to get the green to turn pink you would have to see 228 to 227 but just to start the pullback um, it's going to be very important but in the meantime I can see little whooshes of buying coming in but if we don't take out 250.85 the high of yesterday today's Wednesday by Friday afternoon we have not taken out 250.85 that's going to say aha just a little chink there, a little bit of weakness right there is coming in. Uh, that's the way I'm looking at it. And remember, I think of the chips as the crude oil of the 1900s and uh, the 2000s. Now you've got the chips of the, of the crude oil of the 21st century going on. That's just the way. It's just an easy way to look at it. Uh, is it it's in everything, just about. Uh, maybe not in uh, cookies. But it'll be there. Um, so, all right. So now what we're looking at, a couple of questions came in. All right. Could I look at bonds? James Bonds. If you're looking at bonds right now down uh, almost a point at 114 and 31, let's call it 115. This is serious stuff. And this is what I'm saying, that I believe it, that bonds, bond yields are in a trading band towards the upper uh, end of the trading band. It's been like that for a long time. 
Here, a big move up, leg C, up 69 cents in the TBT. That's the ultra short Lehman 20 Treasury bond uh, ETF. Look at that, 37.16, up 69. That's very nice action. Mm, a gap to leg C. Uh, tells me it's a yield and it trades overnight, so uh, overseas uh, beforehand. So, yeah, I can see that that is a big gap. But it's done that before on the downside, then it filled it. So it's only on the upside, some point it'll fill it. But in the meantime, the, the technique that I've used for so long is called the Chapman Wave Inside Track Propellant or Repellent Zone. Here it is, the propellant zone. And look at this, all the way from the low that was made back in, I think it was either January, the first week of January. Let me just check. Yeah, that, that is the first week of January at, um, uh, no, uh, yes. Oh, it just keeps changing. Uh, that was the last week of December. The last week of December, the uh, TBT went down to 29.22. Then it took about five weeks, and it made a higher low, higher high, and a higher low. And that low was at 30.38. Uh, and that was the week of the first week of February. And then it had a bunch of them all the way from uh, the whole of March. March, the week of the 8th, higher, higher low. Uh, week of the 15th, higher low. And then a much higher low on the 29th of March. And that was at 32.69. Then it had this big screamer to, to a peak C. Wait, that was in the, 20, the 26th of April. It goes to 38.30, and it comes down to what? This exact pink line, which is the, 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 the line of support. And what does it do? It springs off that, and that green nine-period moving average did not close pink. It still stayed green. And that just says to me, you know, this is in the in the methodology. There are some instruments that I, I don't always know whether they're going to get fulfill that peak D, um, and the VIX is one of those, so I, I ignore that. Uh, but in the meantime... Look how this has gone to peak A, then a peak B, and all the time keeping that low that was made back in December sacrosanct and making higher lows and much higher highs. Goes to peak C, and that peak C is at uh, 38 point, give you the exact price, 38.68. That became a peak F back around about the um, 23rd or so of April. And from peak F, it slumped down to the 200 period moving average at about 34.48. Uh, and here it is, 37.18. So it's used that as a springboard. Now, what I very often like to do is I go like this and I go click. And all I do is I, I make that a channel line. And now you can see we've gone above the channel line. I could put two, two lines and make an inside track, but I won't. Just for the moment, I'm saying that's your channel line. And that just says if this channel line continues, then there's a chance if we make a leg D in the yields at 39.08. <laughs> that's um, that's a little way above 37.18 right now. I'm not saying I, I'm, that's what I'm guaranteeing. I'm just saying that's the way the spring from the, the lower range to the upper range of a channel. Now, there's another thing. I don't, I don't want to say that this is uh, what I anticipate. I'm saying very often we get what we call the Chapman Wave falling axe formation. And the rally, especially if it goes to a C or a D, is much better than if it just goes to a B and fails. But in this particular instance, that would say that wherever this goes, I can then take that and say, if there are going to be lower yields, this is what you could expect that it goes up a little bit and then it comes down and it does a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. I'm going to take that away. I'm saying that's a pattern that I'd be looking for. I'm just saying, I'm keeping it in my mind. I'm not saying that that's going to happen. It's going to take a long time before the Fed actually uh, says, we're going to lower rates. All right, I just got that out of the way. Another qu a question came in, uh, NVIDIA. NVIDIA, uh, John, so this is NVIDIA right now. Is trading down just 99 cents at 1,138, and because of that, um, look how look how strong. Let's just do this one at a time because it is su such an important uh, instrument that we we look at all the time. The daily chart has gone to a leg F at this particular point. It's way above the green nine period moving average. The nine is way above the 14. I can't even tell you what would ha what it would take to get this to turn pink. It will, actually, I'll tell you right now, it'd have to go to probably nine, 900 and 
935, something like that. And it's 1138 right now. So that's number one. Number two is the MACD is still expanding. The histogram, that's the vertical line from the faster moving average, it's called the nine period differential, the green line, and the red slow moving average, the 26 period moving average, it's expanding. Look at the relative strength, this gray line right here. It's almost at getting to slightly overboard. This is the one time that I look at it and I say that if the RSI turns pink, in other words, it's over 80%, I believe that's the 80% line for it, that says that's where you've got to be a little bit careful and looking out many bars says that is it's probably getting ready for some kind of a pullback. It's not there yet. The stochastics at 94%, that's fabulous. It's good. Over 90 is fabulous, and over 94 is just that's exactly what you want when something's in a pipe. And then the unbalanced volume is just pulling back a little bit overboard and pulling back. That's the day I can do exactly the same thing on the weekly. Everything's the same on the weekly, and the monthly chart is unbelievable. 92% is stochastic. This is really strong. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour, 2309. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully.
Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hello, so I'm just showing you the one minute charge of the evening. I'm coming back to the video because it is such an important stuff. And also, I wanted to just read something. So, look at this. You've got this beautiful cup formation, and it looks like it's trying to go to where? To this, this uh, horizontal line at 52.97 that I put in here ages ago. I think it was uh, around about um, May the 24th, ages ago, when I'm doing one-minute charts. This is, this is a lifetime. And that says that that 52.97 level will be the first target on the upside. And it just missed it earlier uh, at about 8.750 and then 8-something eight, eight this morning. And uh, then it pulled back very sharply. And now it's come all the way back. One minute chart is trying to get there. So I like to look at things uh, in time and price in, in um, horizontal moves as well as vertical moves. But look what's important here is that that five-minute uh, five e-mini chart has a move at 5,300. That would be the next thing if there's a strong rally today after that sharp sell-off. And my suspicion is you're going to keep getting the selling now rather than before you kept getting the buy. Now it's just kind of an oversold condition. But that's going to be a very big clue. If we break 52.98, then 53,000 is the five minute. What's interesting is that I was talking about this yesterday, I believe it was. I showed you that blue line, the horizontal line at 53.34. Look how the market went right up to it, tested it. Look at that, it, 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 right there. It went, did a whole bunch of testing uh, yesterday morning, and then it failed at that level, and it came down and it went to that uh, that lower level that we were talking about a moment ago, 52.97. Uh, so, okay, I just want to show you how levels can work, how they can become magnets, magnets. And now let's go back to NVIDIA. So NVIDIA right now trading at, uh, let's just get to it. I've got to keep moving this thing away. I'll get used to that. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But I'll have to. Uh, NVIDIA right now uh, trading. Oh, it's even better. Now it's up 259 at 1,141. So I'm looking at this and saying, this is, uh, I, I, I got a, a, a statement here. Uh, are you aware NVIDIA has a P-E ratio of 60? It's been the same for six months. All they have are sales, but not earnings. One day your blinders will come off. Your hyping won't even save it. Like I, personally, a mere mortal, is able to save NVIDIA. Come on, come on. I mean, you're talking about, I know that you like to look at GE, and I love to look at GE. GE is a different kettle of fish altogether. GE has... Um, it's been through the ringer. It's been remade. It's it's re, it's morphed into a really fantastic company, and they have earnings and they have the they have everything. Nvidia is in different in a different area of investing altogether. It's in the area that says, I, I remember there was a time where I used to only look for the the highest PE stocks, but it takes a lot to to be able to hold them because they they get really whipsawed. But uh, in this case. Um, yeah, thank you, Peaky. What powers, huh? Um, anyway, so what I'm looking at is that you've got to think of them as two. It's like you buy yield stocks, you buy dividends, um, your, um, utilities, you buy speculative, you, you buy small caps. Yeah, it's just a different category. Don't get excited about it and don't think that I have that power. Although maybe it's a good thing to think I have that power. I don't. Um, all right, so now what I want to do is say, Everything's very positive. There are two huge gaps. When I say huge, I'm talking about from about 950 to uh, maybe 1,020, and then another one from about 1,060-something to 1,100. At some point, at least the top one's going to be filled. When the top one gets filled, you can start looking at the bottom. But I'm not even looking at this bottom one until I start to see a test of yesterday's low, and that low was... Uh, 1,098.83, meaning that if we go not just a few points, but about five or eight points below it, then I can start saying, ah, maybe now we start to fill the gap. But until then, you've got to be careful. So what I've done for subscribers is <clears throat> we're, we're trying a position, a particular position in a particular way at a particular price. Uh, and that's to do with this whole area of shorting, um, and it's something that I haven't done here for a, a little while, but I'm not afraid to do it because if it works, it's really fantastic. But you can only tiptoe in. 
And that's why I'm saying that I, I can see, look at the way, look at the way this uh, e-mini is trying to work. Buyers are coming in and the buyers are coming in and they're saying, this has been my favorite. You're not going to change it. My favorite is my favorite. And therefore, um, I want to be there. So I'm just saying NVIDIA is probably one of the, one of the, one of the great stocks on the, new, on, the, um, on the stock exchange. To get it to pull back, you need a story. And so far, I don't see a story for it. And I don't see it just withering away because uh, there's a, there are a couple of days of weakness. It's going to have to be persistent. So let's look at it that way. Now we're getting closer and closer. Boom, we just hit it. That 52.98, that's the way I like to look at these uh, resistance levels. Next one will be 5,300. Um, right there, that 200 period moving average in the five-minute chart. And and I treat this with great respect. Look, green in the nine period, in the one-minute chart, uh, green is with the five-minute chart. Only as we're talking, and it's in progress, this leg, strong leg A in the 10-minute chart, only now are we starting to see green show for the nine period moving average. But it means I have a full, what, nine minutes or something to go before we confirm that it's gone long, meaning just that one indicator has gone long um, in the 10 minute chart. <laughs> That's the way it works. All right, now enough with that. We are, okay, now watch, I just didn't, I didn't finish what I was saying before, and that is with NVIDIA, I'm going to say to you, it's in leg. Look, here it goes for the weekly chart. G slash C. The way this move has actually um, unfolded, I have to think it more as a C right now than a, than a G. Um, but that's a work in progress because it's this daily that has to, it's like a little speedboat. The, the, the quicker move is the one that moves and then you get your, 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 um, you know, the bigger, bigger ship, and then you get your super tanker, which takes forever to turn. You don't even see it turning; it's so big. And that's leg D in the monthly chart. So this is one of our leaders, and this is cheated as that. Okay, now let's go to a bunch of things that I wanted to do, and I'm going to do them right now. So I did the bonds, and I'll do that just uh, briefly. I'll just go through the TLT, just to, because some people don't get the the bond; um, they don't get bonds on their package. They, get, they can get the TLT and they get others, but they don't get the futures. So I am going to say that in this particular instance, that's a peak D sell signal to sell mode in the daily TLT. And remember that in, uh, inside track propellant zone of T, the inversion? Well, the TLT has resistance. There's a Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. So we'll be back in a moment. The Dow is down 308. That's we were just a little while ago. And the S&P is down 24. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour. Be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. 
Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, let me just do this because I had a question. Um, so first of all, so all that's happening is that the yields are making, uh, the, the TLT is making lower highs and lower lows, so the yields are making high highs and higher uh, lows. Now in the meantime, Back of the ranch, there is an arch formation. Remember, peak D is where other things can happen. Well, we just had a peak D right there at about 92.26. Here it is, 89.17. So just be real careful. And so the question came in, um, Basil, this is an opportunity to buy. I This is the one time where I'm saying to you, I, I think it's very selective, number one. Number two is... If you're in the right area right now, like the the um, a couple of the semiconductors could have a little bit more of a balance, but I think overall they're going to start um, uh, faltering. That's the, the word I'd have to use is faltering. And number number three out of the whole thing, I would say to you is the bias. I think the tidal change right now is w moving towards a consolidation. As I said, I don't see it. I mean, with the down down so sharply so far, um, you'd have to get each one to do the same thing. And what I think is what's happening is that the down is going to be the weakest and we're going to have some buoyancy in some areas. And that's just going to, and I could always look at the scales of justice on the one side, the left side, you've got the weights and the other side, you've got the weights and you want to balance them. When it's lopsided, um, you get a different scaling. And what happens is, that the weakest might remain weak for a little while, that could be the Dow, and then the strongest remains stronger for a little while, and then they try to find an equilibrium. And that's the way I'm looking at it right now. Until I hear bad news, until there's some uh, someone's come up with a, a way of doing something to the chips that multiplies by you know the, the factor that it keeps multiplying, um, uh, whose rule is it? I can't remember whose rule it is. But if until that comes into force right now, I just think that it's getting a little, it's a little dangerous. I'm looking at some stocks that hold really well. So yeah, comes Nancy asked about Microsoft. So yeah, look, Microsoft, uh, we own Microsoft, but look at this. Microsoft at 430.56 is refusing. It's like a semiconductor, although it's not as powerful in the last move up as some of the semis. Look, it's just 433.60 was the all-time high just four sessions ago. And here it is pulling back to the low of today in the 425 area, 425.69. And lo and behold, where is it? It's at 40.49. So what I'm saying to you is that it's so specific that I think it's going to be a, a work in progress. It's, it's an unfolding uh, story right now. Um, so, and Nancy, what I'm looking at is, let me just see if I can pull up a 120-minute chart just for the moment. Uh, I've got it right here. I'm going to open it up a little bit more. Come on. There we go. So look at this. We've got, I, I haven't even finished this. Is, this is a peak C, but that's a peak A. That's a peak B. That's a peak C. And overlapping D. Yeah, so this is a very interesting. Look, so we've got ourselves peak C right there. 
That's higher. So that becomes a D. That becomes an that be, uppercase on the way up, D. That becomes an E right there. It's just the alphabet that we're doing here in the Chapman Wave methodology. And that was your starting point way down there at about 389, back on the 25th, I think, of April, around about the 25th. Now, what's happened is you've got a brand – this bar cannot be an A because it can't be a low and a high at the same time. So that becomes an A. That becomes a new B. C. D, E, and F. So it's done the peak F, and at this particular point, it's doing very well. It was looking very poor this morning, but it never went pink in the 9 p.m. moving average of the 120-minute chart. Let's look at it this way. If I'm looking at this as a daily as a daily chart rather than in a 120-minute chart, I'd say, look, it's pushed away from the 200-period moving average after testing it for so long, and it moves sharply away, and it's holding away from that. That's very important. And what it says is you've now created another trading band up here. So your trading band is at all-time high to just a little bit lower. And once you start to see um, Microsoft trading at four at 430.46 right now, when you see it trading at the 423.50 or lower level, then it's going to start heading towards the 200 period moving average of 418. At this particular point, it's holding well. Why is it holding well? Because it, and this is what I'm saying to you about uh, maybe buying something right now. Uh, yes, selectively. Uh, for instance, we had a buy today in the, uh, this is in the oil sector itself. I don't know if this is going to work. It's it's, it's a nice chart pattern. I've got a, very, a pretty tight stop. I'm going to make it even tighter. But a lot has to happen. But it's in an area that could possibly see some buying as the general market pulls back. Um, also, we've got a potential short. And that short will only kick in if, in fact, um, I would say a lot of things happen, right? Um, and this particular instance with Microsoft, it's in a trading range. So I, I think, Nancy, you're looking as if there's a chance that it might it might go to uh, another all-time high. And I'm saying to you, yeah, now I want to look at the rest of the day. If the Dow, and I'm using the Dow just for the moment because Microsoft's in the Dow. If the Dow at uh, down 325 starts at about between 130 and 215 this afternoon, if the Dow is more than 315 points lower, especially if it's more than 370 points lower, that's going to put a pull on, on the market so that it's going to um, probably impact the semiconductors later today. If, in fact, the Dow has a sudden surge and it's like 230 minus 235 at 1 o'clock and at 215, it's minus mm, 120 that's very good action, and that's what I'm talking about. This on a, a, a if if I'm looking at a an elastic band, right here the, the Dow is actually starting to really become overbought on a very I'm talking about a really near term situation. So if we see the the latter where the Dow comes right back very nicely, there's no question the S and P, which is only down 26 right now, is really not a big deal. Um, if the if the S and P gets down to minus 15 minus 15 to minus 13, buying is going to come in. So the answer is if you're a really quick trader, if you're looking at something that I want to get in, and if it works, it works, and if it doesn't work, I'm prepared to get out as quickly as possible, I'm going to say to you, I would go for uh, one of the, one of the, uh, I'd, I'd say yes, you could go in, and I'd probably go smaller and maybe a little more aggressive, and just have a training stop. That's the only way I would do it. And be prepared that tomorrow, um, anything can happen tomorrow, right? Economic news starts coming out Thursday and Friday. So Microsoft acting really well. 120-minute chart is pointing to the fact that it, the high so far today is 430.70. If we can get to 430, and it's trading at 430.22. If we can start to trade at the 430. So 431.27, kind of get into the 431s, I think is a good chance. If the market doesn't suddenly take a big reversal by the later in the day, I think you're right. The, yes, you can see a bit of a move to the upside and probably the test, I don't know if test the high of 433.60, but absolutely get to the 420, 420, uh, 
Yeah, 431.20. There you are. So that's the way I'm looking. At. I'll be right back. Basel Chapman, Tiger Dish is out. Dow's down 320. SP's down 27. Be right back. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tigers Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So let me just do this real quickly before we run out of time. Uh, and uh, so let me just do this. So Micron is in leg D. Um, it's in a GCSC in the uh, weekly chart and a leg C in the monthly. That says it's still going to go even higher. So I would not rule out the semiconductors as continuing the big rally maybe in, in the summer, maybe even after a little bit of a pullback. I just wanted to show you that. And then another question came. Where was it? Uh, Chewy. Did I see Chewy? Am I right? Chewy. C-H-E-W. Is that? I, I did something with Chewy recently. Uh, what, is that the C H W C H E W Y? No, that's not right. C H W Y. Oh, 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 look at that. Chewy pet foods. So I, I haven't finished this. I did a peak D the other day. I did the cup formation. I did this more as an experiment in the cup formation and the left side, right side price time match. Did something happen today? It's up 478 to 21.70. Who asked me about it? Anyway, this is a brand new uh, an, a recovery high, uh, not a, a yearly high. That was once upon a time up at the 120 level and it tumbled down to the uh, teens. So, yeah, this is great. This is late D. Okay, so there it is. It went even higher than the left side, right side. So let me do this before we wrap up. 
Um, and check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Uh, this has been a very interesting time, I must say. And the divergence is incredible. That sell signal I got, I'll just do this real quickly. Look, sell signal based on the peak D and the Chapman Bay methodology, we always start to go a little bit cautious. Um, that was right at the exact high. I couldn't tell you how many times we've hit exact highs or within a day or so um, of these turns uh, using this, this, this particular method. And this one has worked out so far. So that just says down 353. And that's just saying to me, this is very specific. So Microsoft's holding well just at the moment. Semiconductors, you want to see those start to tank. And I mean about a 3% decline. And then you're going to get a bigger market correction. So right now, this is a, this is a digestive phase. And we'll see where it takes us. Stay tuned because Steve Rudd recorded his show 